A really warm welcome, Grade 3, to today's English lesson. Um, we are going to be focusing on punctuation today, so let's get going. Just a quick reminder that you can email me at grade3.worksheets.com if you have any questions about this particular lesson. Right, we're going to be just recapping on verbs and adverbs that we did yesterday. So let's revise this topic and see if you remember what you learned, grade 3. So, did you remember that a verb is a doing word and that adverbs describe the noun, the verb, should I say. For instance, the cat played. Played is the verb. How did the cat play? The cat played happily. So happily is the adverb. It is adding to the verb. What will you learn today? Well, it's punctuation. So we will be doing full stops, capital letters, commas, question marks, and exclamation marks. We use all these tools to, to write really sensible, readable sentences. If we don't have capital letters, full stops, commas, question marks, exclamation marks, sometimes, I mean, most of the time, it just does not make sense. Well, let's have a look at this paragraph. I'm going to read it as if it does not have punctuation at all, which it doesn't. But I want you to sound what it, hear what it sounds like when I read it like it, when it doesn't have punctuation. And then at the end of this presentation, we will punctuate this particular paragraph to make it look really smart and punctuated. All right, let's go. It was a sunny day. The school was quiet while the children were busy with their lessons. Suddenly, there was a loud noise outside. The children ran to the window to see what had happened. Mr. Scott had driven his car into Mrs. Brown's bicycle. What a commotion. What was going to happen now? I had to take a huge, big breath. So there were no capital letters, no full stops, commas, question marks, no exclamation marks as well. Oh, dear. Not so easy to read. And that's just why we need punctuation. So let's learn and revise and recap how we use punctuation in our writing. And we're going to start with full stops and capital letters. We use a full stop at the end of every sentence and we use a capital letter at the beginning of every sentence. We also use capital letters for special names like proper nouns. Right, let's go ahead and use capital letters and full stops in these sentences. In the number one, you will see that there is no capital letter at the beginning of the sentence, so that should immediately make you perk your eyes up or perk your ears up and think, okay, how am I going to correct this? And there we have it. We have a capital T for that, because it's the beginning of, of the sentence. And we have a full stop at the end. In grade threes, I know it's quite difficult for you to remember to put these in when you're writing something, uh, a story or doing some creative writing in the classroom. And I know that it's, it's hard when you've got all your ideas coming into your head and you wanting to put them on paper to remember things like capital letters and full stops. So that's why I'm focusing on them today. And here, many different trees grow in the forest. We counted at least 20 varieties. Now, in this um, example, there are actually two sentences. So we need to get to figure out where we put a full stop at the end of a sentence and where we start a new sentence with a capital letter. So let's have a look at the answer. Here again, capital letter to start our sentence with. Many different trees grow in the forest. And that is where our full stop comes now. And we start a new sentence. We counted at least 20 varieties. And then we put our full stop at the end. I want you to note that we could have done this. We could have said many different trees grow in the forest. And we counted at least 20 varieties. But that would have been, been using conjunctions. Um, and I didn't ask you to do that. And the next one, my mum 
knitted a jersey for my dad. He really likes it. How are we going to punctuate that sentence? Have you got any ideas? Well, there's a capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. And then, my mom knitted a jersey for my dad. There we put a full stop and we can't start a new sentence with a capital letter. He really likes it. I'm sure you're getting the hang of it now, guys. The next example, the teacher asked the children to be quiet when they did not listen. She became angry. This is also two sentences. I want you to figure out where the first sentence finishes and the second sentence starts. I'm going to give you a short few seconds. Right, so the teacher there is where your capital T for teacher asks the children to be quiet. That's where the first sentence finishes. And your new sentence starts with a capital W for when they did not listen, she became angry. How about commas? You also have to use commas. They also punctuate sentences. The comma offers readers a soft pause. And commas are also used when we list items. For instance, look at this example. Mom bought apples, comma, oranges, comma, grapes, comma, lemons. Then we also have peaches in that list, but because there is an and, we don't need the comma over here. Where we put the and, the and and the comma do not go together. So mom bought apples, comma, oranges, comma, grapes, comma, lemons and peaches for school lunches. Let's use commas to punctuate these sentences. Craig invited John, Reggie, Mdu and Musi to his house. Can you tell me where you think those commas are going to go? And remember that commas don't go next to the end. That commas don't like to live next door to the end. Let's see if you can get it right. Craig invited John, Reggie, Ndu and Musi to his house. So we only have two commas there. Um, and then where the and is, we don't have a comma at all. Next example, Angelina went to the shop to buy chips, sweets, coke, chocolates and fizzes. Sounds delicious. Where do you think those commas are going to go? Let's see if you've got it right. Angelina went to the shop to buy chips, sweets, coke, Chocolates and fizzes. So there we go. Remember, no comma when, when we put the and in. Well done. Then we also have to have a look at question marks and exclamation marks. A question mark indicates or tells us that a question has been asked. So we need to put a question mark at the end of a sentence if it's a question. And an exclamation mark, it's a big word to say, is used when someone shouts or says something quite boldly like sit up straight or oh, please be quiet or be careful don't cross the road then we put an exclamation mark to say that this is a quite a strong statement then we need to look at question words what sort of words would we see at the beginning of a question sentence and there they are there are others but these are our main ones who what, where, how, when, why, and which. So let's use question marks and exclamation marks to punctuate these sentences. 
Here's the first example. There's our question, our question word at the beginning. What are you buying me for my birthday? I bet you asked that of your parents or your moms or dads when it's close to your birthday, grade threes. I know I do. I like to try and figure out what I'm getting. And it's a question, so it gets a question mark. The second uh, example is, stop that noise immediately. So that's quite a bold statement. It's a bit of a shout. So what do you think goes there? Yes, an exclamation mark. Can you say exclamation? You'll have to practice. The third example, please could I have another helping of pudding? What do you notice about that sentence? Whoever's speaking that sentence is asking a question. Please could I have another helping of pudding? So, what goes at the end of that sentence then? A question mark. Absolutely correct. Well done. And now, you have won a prize. Well done. That's a strong statement. It's making a big, bold statement. So, what would go there? Grade 3. Not a question mark, it's not a question, it's a statement and it's a bold one. So it is an exclamation mark as well. Are you getting the idea? Hopefully when you do writing at home and at school, you can begin to use these exclamation marks and question marks, commas, full stops and capital letters in all your work. And the idea is for you to go back and check your work after you've done, made it, written a paragraph or sentences, so that you can check that the full stops and so on are in the correct places. Remember that paragraph we had right in the beginning of this presentation? Well, we're going to go back to that and we are going to put in the necessary punctuation. So let's go ahead with that. I'll read it again. It was a sunny day. The school was quiet while the children were busy with their lessons. Suddenly, there was a loud noise outside. The children ran to the window to see what had happened. Mr. Scott had driven his car into Mrs. Brown's bicycle. What a commotion! What was going to happen now? I'm going to try and use my pen and see if it works decently enough to change this. Otherwise, I'll just show you the next slide. That there is the beginning of the sentence, so it gets a capital R. It was a sunny day. Full stop. Capital T because it's the start of the next, of the next sentence. The school was quiet while the children were busy with their lessons. Full stop. You can hear in the tone of my voice that it's the end of the lesson. Brand new sentence, so a capital S. Suddenly, there was a loud noise outside. Full stop there. Capital letter because it's the start of a new sentence. The children ran to the window to see what had happened. You could put an exclamation mark there, but I don't think I'm going to. It wouldn't be wrong if you did, because they ran to the window. It was like a bit of an excitement going on there. But new sentence, capital M for Mr. It's his name. It's, his, it's a proper noun. And Scott is his name as well, part of his name, so capital S. Mr. Scott had driven his car into... Yes, capital, Mrs. Brown's bicycle. Oh dear, Mr. Scott was in trouble. And that's the end of that sentence, so we have a little full stop. Whoops, funny full stop. Capital W, the beginning of that sentence. What a commotion. Now there's a bold statement. So here, grade three is this way. Oops, let me see if I can draw this without making a complete mess. An exclamation mark. Oh, I'm sure yours will look better than mine. And capital W for what was going to happen now. Well, there's your watch or question word. 
and we are going to put a question mark there and we are done there it is now done um, nice and neatly much nicer than my handwriting it was a sunny day and the school whoa can you see a mistake there guys all right it was this a sunny day i didn't put the full stop there it just shows teachers also make mistakes sometimes it was a sunny day the school was quiet while the children were busy with their lessons suddenly there was a loud noise outside the children ran to the window to see what had happened Mr. Scott had driven his car into Mrs. Brown's bicycle. What a commotion! What was going to happen now? Right, and so there we are now at the end of our punctuation lessons. What have we learned so far? Capital letters come at the beginning of a sentence. Full stops come at the end of a sentence. Commas are used when we list items and to give the reader breathing space. Question marks are used when asking a question and exclamation marks are used when we have bold statements like someone says stop what you're doing or don't run across the road. Exclamation marks are then used when asking um, something is when, when something saying something is shouted or spoken boldly when you are when speaking boldly. So we've come to the end of our punctuation lesson, grade threes. Um, remember that there will be a worksheet or an activity for you to do at the end, which you can download and do at the end. And then you can mark it with yourself with the memo as well. I hope you enjoyed your lesson and have a lovely day. See you soon. Bye.